I made this response video to Big Lundy to answer all his questions and clarify some of the points of my interpretation and Christianity argument. This video was brought to his attention before our Skype debate. When he started asking me all the questions I answered in this video, I realized he's a fucking moron. When I first rendered this video, the audio began lagging behind the video. That's because my computer doesn't have enough memory. So if it starts happening with this re-render, I just added this to let you know why. And apologize for that. Now on to the video. So your various YouTube wrist flapper atheists have gotten all up on Billy Bob and Bionic Dance. And I've defended Bionic Dance a number of times. And I realize it's time to get around to Billy Bob. And the reason I haven't before is basically, how do I put it? Billy Bob, he uses what you might call poetic language, metaphorical. Uh, it's not really what, uh, a strong suit of mine. I can understand what he's saying with perfect clarity, but I have difficulty explaining it to somebody who just doesn't seem to get it. it it's almost like Billy Bob's detractors are being willfully ignorant or they are incapable of abstract thought or a combination of the two. But, you know, I'm kind of bored. I've had me some coffee. I think I'll give it a shot. It's going to be a little harder than other videos because I can't just yell moron into the camera like I like to do, but let's give it a shot. Uh, Big Lundy responding to Billy Bob. Let's just go point by point. Uh, number one. Billy explains what the difference between our analogies is, that, that I'm talking about different interpretations on serving food, whereas he's saying that there's only one way to serve it. Well, we weren't really talking about how to serve food uh, originally, but whatever. Uh, so the new thought experiment is that Billy is wondering how to serve food. Two people tell him different things as to how to prepare the food, but in reality there's only one way to serve the food because the food itself apparently told him so. Well, all right. Uh, by the way, when I am lecturing you on interpersonal communications, know that you have failed as a human being because me, interpersonal communications, ain't my thing. But let me explain this to you. Different people communicate in different ways. And what Billy's doing here, instead of saying, um, sir, this is disanalogous, um, so here's some more big words. What he's doing is he's illustrating the failure of your analogy. Namely, you use a food analogy. There are multiple ways of serving food. No one of them is definitely right, not one is definitely wrong, and Bilzi is saying that this analogy fails because God, unlike food, is a being with its own will, its preferences, it, I mean it has an opinion of its own, it's a sentient being, unlike the food, so you're like, the food somehow told him, he is the one saying that so that you understand the absurdity of your analogy. He is illustrating it rather than just saying it with a bunch of highfalutin philosophy language as you like to do. Different people, different styles. As an effective interpersonal communicator, you need to learn to identify the differences in styles and adapt to the way your communicating partner is speaking. Okie dokie. Um, here's the problem with that, Billsy. Uh, well, one of the problems. Uh, that's completely disanalogous to your problem, to your point about Christianity. You see, many Christians actually think that there can indeed be multiple interpretations as to how one can serve God. And once again, this is tediously obvious for those of us capable of abstract thought. The point Billsy was making is that, yes, the Christians do treat it like it's food, like it's, oh, you can do it this way, you can do it that way, it's a matter of taste, whatever the fuck you prefer. And that's the problem. Because if there is a god, a sentient being, and it is telling them, then that wouldn't be the case. Uh, or let me put it this way, um, that, sir, that is, that is highly disanalogous. I can't tell you the amount of times I've seen Facebook updates or Twitter feeds where everyone essentially says, worship God your own way, just keep Jesus in your heart, or whatever. Now, of course, I think that's all silly, but it still serves to prove the point. Yes, it does. 
Billy's point, not yours. Uh, plenty of Christians think God's cool with you so long as you believe he exists in some particular way and are a good person in general. doesn't really matter how you worship him. You don't even have to read the Bible for a lot of them. So, going with your Christian analogy, two Christians, different denominations, one believes in hell, one doesn't. They tell a guy about their religion, he gets confused, asks which one's the Christian, they say that they both are. Well... That's quite simple, Billy. Both Christians would tell the guy, and I know because uh, this has happened to me, to follow his heart's intuitions on which one is right, because the Holy Spirit will guide them. And it's really not all that hard. I mean, well, here's what you fail to grasp. I'm. I didn't ask him, but I'm pretty much 100% goddamn sure that Billy Bob was fully aware of all that shit you just said. But here's the thing. If there's one Christian saying, blah, 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 another Christian saying another thing, blah, 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 the two are contradictory, the guy gets confused, he's like, which one is right? And the Christian say, well, you know what, just follow your heart, follow your intuition, and it will magically guide you to the correct path, and whatever that is will be okay. But it is the Holy Spirit guiding you. Ooh. Well, if we're going to belabor the food analogy until it's a bloody pulp, then they are talking about that shit like it's a food that you can serve suited to your individual taste, not as if it is a sentient being that could tell you what to do. Capiche? Any hoozle. Next, you said that it didn't matter which Christian was right or wrong, and that it wasn't the point, just so that they didn't know who was right or wrong. Well, uh, they both believe that they're right, and that's uh, good enough. Oh, it's good enough, is it? Well, who's it good enough for? Because it sure ain't good enough for me. It apparently isn't good enough for Billy Bob. You know, I bet a lot of reality fans probably would say that shit ain't good enough for them. Because the belief is guided by God's manifestation in them through the Holy Spirit. That's meaningless fucking made up bullshit! That doesn't mean anything! <laughs> this is so easy. How do people get paid thousands of dollars to do this kind of shit? Um, you went on for a bit on how you weren't calling Theo the person a racist Nazi or white supremacist. You were calling Theo the Christian a racist Nazi and white supremacist. And that Cardinal Virtues and myself were not sympathizers to racists, Nazis, and white supremacists. But that Big Lenny and Cardinal Virtues, the sympathizers, were sympathizers to racists, Nazis, and white supremacists. I believe I got that right. Um, anyhow... None of that really makes any sense, and let me explain why. Firstly, you base this off of your own belief as to what Christianity is, which is based on biblical literalism, which is one of the newest branches of Christianity to date. It's only about 120 years old. So I have no idea why you think your biblical literalism gives you any sort of authority to what a Christian is. Second, to Well, Mr. Lundy, consistent with all of your arguments up until now, it gives him precisely as much authority as absolutely any Christian in existence with their interpretation. So, he's not asking for special favors, but however it is he interprets Christianity is exactly and precisely 100% as valid as that of any Christian anywhere that has ever lived. Do you, do you understand? These are your own arguments. It's like food, man. You can serve it however you want. You can look at it however you want. It's whatever you want it to be, and it's all correct. Well, that doesn't just apply to Christians. That applies to anyone. It has to, as a matter of logical consistency, okay? So, his point of view is just as valid as any Christian's. You can't attack it on, on that basis. And don't tell me because it's a minority opinion, because that's just some, some ad populum horse shit, and it has nothing to do with the logical validity of his stance. Actually, there's no logical validity to his stance any more than anyone else's, and that's kind of the point. But rather than just pointing out the tediously obvious, he uses his communication style to illustrate it. But you apparently cannot understand illustrations. Say, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking about you, the Christian, or you the sympathizer, is completely incoherent. If I went up to a Ku Klux Klan member named Bob and I said, I don't want to talk to Bob the racist right now, I want to talk to Bob. 
<laughs> imagine, imagine if I went up to you and I said, I don't want to talk to Billy Bob the person. I want to talk to Billy Bob the artist. <laughs> None of that makes any sense. And the reason is because being a Christian or a racist or an artist or a sympathizer or whatever is a simple part of the whole sum. You might as well be telling me that you're not talking to me but my chest. It makes about just as much substantive difference. You know, Mr. Lundy, you really seem to like to gas on about how important philosophy is and blah blah blah. And yet, for all of your love of philosophy, yes, I realize that philosophy itself means love of knowledge. You don't have to explain the tediously obvious to me, Mr. Lundy. Anyway, as much as you love philosophy, you seem to have a very simplistic view of what comprises a person's identity. A person is really kind of a democracy of one. They're not only a composite of all of the drives that motivate them to do all of the things they do, but also a composite of the cognitive and behavioral paradigms that they have absorbed or constructed over their lives. In this case, talking about Theo Warner the Christian is referring to a specific one of these, or actually a, a specific uh, composite of many subunits because there are both cognitive and behavioral aspects to the Christianity paradigm. And then he is further saying, here is my interpretation of Christianity, which is has equal logical validity to yours, and it is at odds with your cognitive behavioral paradigm. What's up with that? Oh yeah, see how it's all ridiculous. You're focusing on the words and so busy with your highfalutin philosophical language that you fail to grasp the depth of what Billy Bob is really getting at here. And if I were some sort of poet or writer or had things like feelings, I'm sure I could explain it to you a lot better. But just the fact that I am the one that has to explain this to you demonstrates the very magnitude of your failure. You then gave the example of Abraham and Isaac. Firstly, I'd like to say that uh, that's, go, that's fantastic, but many Christians would tell God to fuck off in that situation. Matt Dillahunty has figured that even if you're 100% devoted to God and will do everything he says as a Christian, you still don't have to do it because you could easily just respond with, I will not do that because you are not God. God would never ask me to do such a thing. You are the devil in disguise. I know Theo has said that he would tell God to fuck off. I know John the Hut Dweller has said that he would tell God to fuck off, and you really need to just start listening to people when they talk to you. Unless, of course, you don't think that they're talking to you, but you're pinky. Uh, now, <laughs> do all Christians share this position? No. And I and I support calling bullshit on those that would indeed kill their kid if ordered by God, like Jesus Freak 777 who said, I hope I have enough faith to do it. Fuck that guy. But those that do don't represent, don't represent those that don't. Do you understand? Your response to this is, yeah, but who's to say the literal meaning is wrong and the new interpretation is right? Well, we are. Or rather, the Christians are. And that stance cannot be justified logically in any fucking way. And that, once again, is Bilzi's point. And you, once again, whew, as the people who read the book and are free to take out of it whatever they will. Then you might say, but then this story means nothing. No, it means plenty of things to plenty of different people. Unless, of course, you're saying that if people don't understand something, if, that if people do understand something differently, then there is no understanding. No, he's saying that much like those fucking inkblot tests, if everybody sees something different, like, hey, I see a butterfly. I see my father killing my mother with a hypodermic needle. I see an elephant fucking a goat. I see a car making love to an airplane. Hey, that's similar to my goat thing. Then the inkblot itself does not actually have any intrinsic meaning. Uh, anyhow, Abraham didn't know what he was going to do. It doesn't tell you anything that he was thinking. It didn't tell you any of his motivations. It just said in the next sentence that he went to Isaac and told him that they were going to go out. And even then, afterwards, Isaac said that they were going to return. I mean, you can go ahead and say, well, that just means that Abraham lied to Isaac, but you can't really discern that because the story doesn't say that. Where does your biblical literalism take you here? Your interpretations of that story are irrelevant. And actually, Billy Bob's literal interpretation of the story is irrelevant. 
His literal interpretation of the story is to, once again, illustrate a point that you are consistently failing to grasp. Of course, I'm not justifying the end decision here. It was still a bad choice to tie up your son and go to sacrifice them, even if you weren't going to go ahead and do it completely. Um, but he, he made this decision only, af only after having seemingly, and this is my interpretation, exhausted all sort of rational reasons as to why he could do this, and simply went ahead and took a leap of faith, coined by Kierkegaard at... See, this would be a great opportunity for me to explain the multiple personas within a single identity type of theory here, okay? See, I, as a compassionate individual, want to inform you at this point that, hey buddy, buddy, uh, just, just so you know, for your own good, um, you're kind of coming off like a pretentious douchebag. As a physicist, I want to say, Hey, did you know that philosophy, uh, it's not as cool as you think it is? It's just something, it's, you know, it's basically a form of mental masturbation. But then I, as a man, just want to punch you in your flabby fucking face for being a pretentious douchebag. Do you see how, see, all of these are at war within me right now, because I'm, I'm actually several different people, as are most people. Corn by Kierkegaard. Uh, please, by the way, do not confuse leap of faith with blind faith. There's a difference between the two. I don't have time to explain the difference, but I recommend reading Kierkegaard's work if you're interested. I mean, you are starting to read philosophy now, right? You know, there's a lot of drawbacks to only having one eye. You might say, uh, you might think it's the lack of depth perception or the way shit can sneak up on you from one side. But actually, it's that when people say douchebaggy shit like that, you know, there's only so much you can roll one fucking eye. I can't roll my eye enough at you, man. Ah, could somebody loan me an eye so I can roll that too? You then explained, under my interpretation, a Christian would kill a baby if ordered. Which is fine, because your interpretation is the minority across the world. Thank goodness for that. Except what he's really doing is, for the millionth fucking time, <laughs> pointing out that each of these interpretations has precisely the same amount of logical validity and the number of people believing it absolutely has no impact on that since reality itself is not a fucking democracy and you yet again are failing to understand this very simple point that he is making. You then go on a bit more about the Christian God under your interpretation being X, Y, and Z, but my response to all of those is the same every time. Minority interpretation. In the words of St. Thomas Aquinas, Most Christians are indeed, indeed most Jews, uh, view the Bible's Old Testament as not being literal stories to follow by the word, but perhaps epic poems, or just moral stories, or just stories to read that for fun. Uh, and you can just interpret them as your heart guides you to. Miss the point again. Miss the point again, motherfucker. I dare ya. I double dare ya. Miss the point one more goddamn time. Well, you're gonna need to demonstrate that. I mean, I know, I know, I know some pretty decent evidentiary arguments, but nothing so solid as a syllogistic, valid, and sound 100% logical proof that a god doesn't exist, Billy. Which is what you're kind of suggesting here. I mean, you could win a Nobel Prize if you figured out a way to demonstrate God didn't exist in the same way that 1 plus 1 equals 2. Whoa, 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 Mr. Philosophy is necessary and not simple. Isn't this ontology 101? You cannot disprove something with syllogistic argument, which, by the way, uh, you seem to be a couple goddamn millennia behind in the whole uh, state of affairs with the logic that we use. Syllogisms? What are you, fucking Plato? We've moved on to better kinds of logic, but forget about that. You can't disprove something until it has been coherently defined. Is there a coherent definition of God? Hmm? No, then no definition is possible, and further no, er, no disproof is possible, and no disproof is necessary, because nobody has so much as come up with a coherent claim, let alone supported it. Anyhow, 
He went on to say that if one were to believe that Kermit the Frog, the character, went home from work to Miss Piggy after Sesame Street was turned off, this would, in essence, turn the statement into a mathematical term of 1 plus 1 equals 5. Well, I mean, kinda, but that's, that's just because it can't be sufficiently demonstrated. Uh, are you a total fucking retard because it hasn't been demonstrated? No. Because we know that they are puppets. You know what? This video is done. Have a nice day, everyone. Thanks to Snake Pliskinus for allowing me to do this to his video. A video Big Lundy saw before our Skype debate I'd like to reiterate.